Welcome to Innovators Edge Executive Studio. We're privileged to bring you the most transformational innovators and leaders in the industry, and today we're joined by Ken Frazier, the CEO, right? yeah, the Executive Vice President, Chief Strategy and Development Officer, is that right? That's it, it's a mouthful. From Crawford and Company, and uh, so Ken, what a privilege. Thank you, Thank privilege you. to be here. Thank you for taking the time. So uh, Crawford, to me, is the epitome of um, an established entity in the industry that's taken on a, a, a real innovation path, a process. You've adopted an approach. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that approach is and how you guys initiated the, this, this culture of innovation inside Crawford and, and what that looks like? Well, let me start by saying I think you're being overly kind to us, <laughs> but I appreciate the compliment. Um, we are embracing innovation, but it doesn't mean that I think we're doing enough right. in innovation. Uh, we are very proud. We're a 75-year-old company coming up in 76 years. Um, we embrace our history, but we're also looking to embrace innovation. I think when you're 75 years in existence and you've done really, really well, you can't just keep repeating the same things and thinking that they're relevant in today's world. So you have to keep moving with the times. And when I joined the company three years ago, I was asked to come in and really challenge the company to be honest with itself about how, how innovative we are being or we're not being. Hence the reason why I would give us a B minus and others might, might be kind and, and give us an A. Right. Um, I don't think we're doing enough, but I don't think you can ever do enough. I think you have to keep challenging yourself. You have to be prepared to take risks and you have to be prepared to make mistakes along the way. So we've, we've looked internally at how we can improve what we're doing for our customer base. We've looked internally at how we structure ourselves and how we go to market around the five business units that we have. Uh, we will shortly announce some changes, which I can't yet get into, but we will, we will announce before year end a total reorganization of how we are delivering our services to our client base. Far more aligned with the insurance industry, far more aligned with products and solutions for our client base. Okay. We go look that we bought almost a year ago now. This time last year, I was here as we were in the middle of the, the discussions to, to acquire um, a majority stake in, in We Go Look. And maybe We Go Look's a great example of what we're trying to do and what we want to continue to do. We Go Look is an innovator within the insure tech space. I think it's one of the sort of Cinderella stories that's proven to be a very high success rate. Absolutely. When we looked at We Go Look, it it was exciting to us because they were very passionate about improving the consumer experience in the world of claims. Most of InsureTech is still focused on distribution. This year, when I'm here this year and I see, you know, a thousand people last year and four thousand people this year, this is truly successful in, if you're measuring it by the, the volume and, right. and the, the appeal that it's obviously creating to the insurance industry. But for us, WeGoLook represented a moment in time where we could actually take a leap forward in innovation. We could actually take WeGoLook, embrace what they are doing, but also be a catalyst for them to, to, to advance and accelerate their mission. Whilst at the same time, they're a huge catalyst for us to look at ourselves and change. We're changing the process of how we handle our client base based on what WeGoLook is bringing to our marketplace and our client base. So if that's innovation, Yes, we're being innovative. We're changing, we're improving, and if innovation, in, innovation can't simply exist, you and I talked about this earlier, innovation can't exist as a thought that sits on a shelf. It has to be something that not only do you embrace, but you actually execute on. And it's only when you execute and it actually changes how your customer experiences the service you're giving that you've been innovative in the eye of the customer. Right. So we want to be innovative in the eye of the customer. So we go look is, changing how we handle our clients. They're a lower cost, quicker service, consumer friendly, consumer focused, and we, as a result, I think have recognized that we need to be more focused on the consumer and not just the client. Let me, diff let me explain what I mean by that. The insurance industry is simply a means to get to a consumer. Policyholders are the end product. They're the end consumer. Right. And so what we will look at, and I think InsureTech is teaching us, is you, you've got to look past the insurance company and at the end game, and the end game is their policyholder. And the more that we focus on improving the policyholder experience, from a claims point of view, right. from, from start to finish, from the speed with which we get there, from how we deal with them, from the respect that we give to them, to how we quali quantify the loss, 
to the integrity that we bring to the table every time that we go out and visit with them. When we're doing those things and the consumer is saying to our client, the insurance company, that that experience was better, I think we're enhancing the brand of our client. And so every time we can enhance the brand of our client and help the consumer, You're it's a win-win. Enhancing win. the brand of profit. And we go look, that's what we go look kind of taught us and, and accelerated for us internally. And so we're, we're looking to continue to find other adjacencies. So while I'm here in SureTech, I'm meeting with other companies that could potentially accelerate that mission for us. Um, we're also doing a lot internally. We, we've, we have set about a total rebuild of our technology. We hired a new CTO about nine months ago. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason for making that change was recognizing that we needed to be more innovative and, and quicker to the marketplace with what we're looking to do. So part of an innovation process, right, is, is kind of, is, you know, innovation isn't throwing, you know, up against, stuff up against the wall and hoping, seeing what sticks. There has to be a strategic domain, there has to be a destination, right? So how does Crawford go about identifying those strategic domains that you'll then look into the insure tech space or look internal to your own techn technology capabilities to fill? The domains that we look at are depending on the different buying styles of who we're serving. So we, we are looking to be innovative around two ends of the spectrum of claims, if you like. So at the, the, at the high volume space, that's where we go look is really driving change for us. You can take that all the way through to the consultant space, fee for service, the very, if you like, intellectually and most demanding, complicated, complex losses that are out there. We're looking at companies that are in um, forensic engineering and forensic accounting that are driving change within their own domain, so to speak, within their own industries. Right. And we're excited to bring those into our organization. So, so as, as I think about Crawford a year from now, two years from now, two years from now, three years from now, I think about an organization that will embrace change at every level of the claims world. Not just the volume space where we were already, I think, So you look at the something. entire value chain, the entire supply chain and... Look at, I look at the whole supply chain of claims management. Right. right? And, and I think about it in segments. I think about it in, in the consumer world and then I think about it in a true B2B world where the commercial buyer requires um, a level of um, efficacy in the claims process that can only be improved by technology enhancements that disrupt that space. Right. And I think that's what I'm starting to see here as well. Right. The, the volume space is the easy one in some ways, right? It because is. it's easier to grasp. But when you, start, when you start challenging professional associations and how accountants do forensic accounting or how engineers do forensic engineering, and you see some of the technology enhancements that are coming into that space, that excites me. Distribution, it kind of seems like an easier space, but actually the execution of distribution is super hard. When you look at the supply chain, um, it's hard to identify, but once you do, you at least have a path to execute, and it can make an impact quickly, like We Go Look has made in, in, in the Crawford supply we, chain. We Go Look has changed how we think about how we handle our clients, not just how we act towards our clients. Interesting. So. You know, we look at innovation as kind of a, the constant pursuit of efficiency toward a, a designated strategic domain for the purpose of creating ROI or creating new markets, growth. So in that context, right, Crawford, how is this, how is this revenue model? How is this build, do, you, do you look at changes to your business model or is it just incremental changes in the supply chain to make it more efficient? Both. So, so um, I mentioned earlier on that we're looking to change how we're taking ourselves to, to the market. Yes. So a good example of that is, is sort of, if you like, internal innovation. We have an organization called Contract to Connection. It's a fulfillment arm within insurance. So rather than, rather than um, the, the model of insurance is indemnity, and indemnity is giving the, putting the policy holder back in the position they were immediately before the loss. Right. No better, no worse. Right. Um, and generally speaking, insurance executes that responsibility through providing a check, basically providing a cash disbursement. Right. We're, we're challenging the industry to say, no, that's not enough. What we should actually do is fix what was broken, repair what was, what was damaged. And so we, we have a, a network um, of largest network in the country of contractors. 
professional contractors, accredited, qualified, warranted by us for three years with their work. So when we are taking them to the marketplace, we're saying to the insurance company, rather than just give a check and say that's it, right? Why don't we actually repair that which was broken? Right. And so our contractor network goes out, and it's extremely busy now with the, with the hurricanes that have sure. just come through, very right. topical. We're swamped. We, we can't actually meet the demand that's coming in, which tells us something about how, how we have to continue to invest in this space. But actually fixing what was broken is far more appealing to us than simply adjusting and, and being an arbitrator, if you like, between what the insurance company thinks and what the what the policy order That's thinks. actually meeting the customer's need where, where it is, right? Correct. One thing to give them a check and say, you know, have a nice day. It's another thing to, to really serve the need where they where it's most impactful for them. Correct, and, it, and it's technologically enhanced because one of the value propositions of that is we, we don't, it's not a referral service. So it's not, we've got all these people, let's do a referral to you. We actually price up how much the work should cost based on the database of benchmarking the type of damage that was done, the location, the, the location of, of where the, the repair needs to be made, and what the going rate is for contractors in that area. And so we can put all of those things together and we can work out what a fair and reasonable rate is for that work to be done right. in a high quality way that fulfills the need of the policy holder and leaves the insurance company with a very satisfied customer. You know, there's a lot said um, these days about customer centricity and and all that. And I, I, the way I look at that is, when you talk about customer centricity, you're looking at the customer. I think that's the wrong way to do it. You've got to put yourself in the shoes of the customer. the customer. You've got to be the customer and look totally. back at the company. And so when you put yourself in the shoe of the company, of those customers, of those, those consumers, and you look back at Crawford, what do you want their experience to be? I want their experience to be one that when Crawford walks out of the door, they're glad that we walked through the door. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. That's really great. You're taking a 75 year old company, innovation is driving it to be the most dynamic innovator in the space today. And uh, congratulations. Thank Ken, you. thank you for joining us today. It's been terrific. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It.